Okay, so I'm still continuing with going through every exam question that has ever been asked. And in this one, we're going through indices. And this is indices in the number topic. It does come up again when we do the algebra topic. If you do want this document, it is linked in the description. And there's tons of other things on my channel that will help you with this. So I've broken it down into these different sections. We've got simple, fractional, mixed, and then matching the bases, which is probably the hardest part that we've got here. So starting off with a simple one, we're going to work out the value of this. Now, if you remember, when you're multiplying powers, sorry, when you're multiplying them, you add the powers and dividing, you subtract. So 3 to the power of 7 multiplied by 3 to the power of minus 2 over 3 cubed. I'm going to start by adding the powers on the top. So that would be 3 to the power of 5, because 7 minus 2 is 5. And then I'm going to subtract those powers because it's a division, and that is 5 take away 3, which is 2. Now, it does say work out the value of, so we actually need to calculate that. And 3 squared is 9 for this one. So we do have the correct answer of 9 for this here, OK? So let's look at this one that we have. This one is now moving into fractional. There are no simple ones left. Write down the value of 100 to the power of a half. Now, to the power of a half means the square root of 100. So we're actually just going to write down the fact that the answer is 10. Now, we don't need to write down whether it's positive or negative. We can just leave it as 100. Now we're going to find the value of 125 to the power of 2 over 3. 125 to the power of 2 over 3 to the 3 part means we're going to do the cube root of 125. The 2 means we will square that answer. The cube root of 125 is a number that times by itself 3 times to give you 125, and that's 5, because 5 times 5 is 25, and you times it by 5 again, and you get 125. So it's actually just 5 squared, and because we want the value, the answer is 25 for this one. So it's 10 and 25. So let's have a look at the next one that we've got. Again, it's some fractional stuff. Patrick has to work out the exact value of 64 to the power of a quarter. And Patrick says that a quarter of 64 is 16, so 64 to the power of a quarter is equal to 16. Explain what is wrong with what Patrick says. Well, we know that if you do something to the power of a quarter, then it actually means what you're doing is you're taking the fourth root of that number. So what we're going to say here is that 64 to the power of a quarter is the fourth root of 64, not one quarter of 64. And if you wanted to actually work out what that answer is, it's going to be something a little bit different. 64 to the power of a quarter, if I show you it on the calculator, is not going to be the same thing if I do it to the power of a quarter. It's 2 root 2. So it's not what Patrick thinks. And I think you can see it here. Yeah, here's an acceptable answer. He needs to find the fourth root of 64. Or you could give the correct answer of 8.28. So pretty easy, actually, especially if it's on a calculator paper. Um, right, what have we got here? It's some more mixed things that we've got. So now we're trying to do 81 to the power of minus a half. Bit difficult to see, but there is actually a minus that's there with that question, okay? So the first thing is that the minus means to take the reciprocal, and the half means to do the square root. So I'm actually going to begin by doing the square root of 81, and then afterwards the negative means to do the reciprocal. The square root of 81 is 9, so it's 9 to the power of minus 1, which just means it's 1 ninth for this. 64 over 125 to the power of 2 thirds. Well, the thirding part means we're going to do the cube root of this, and then the squaring part means we'll square it afterwards. So the cube root of 64 is 4, and the cube root of 125 is 5. So we're just going to be squaring that. That means you square the 4 and you square the 5. So we get the answer of 1 ninth for part A and 16 over 25 for part B. 1 over 9, 16 over 25. Got them right. Okay, next one that we've got here, it's a calculator paper. It says find the value of x. So we've got p to the power of 3 times p to the power of x equals p to the power of 9. Well, I want this power and this power to add to equal that power, which just means x must be equal to 6. Remember, you add the powers when you're multiplying, and 3 plus 6 is 9. This one, you multiply the powers when you have them in brackets. So if I've got 7 squared to the power of y, which is 7 to the power of 10, I need the 2 multiplied by the y to give 10. And 2 multiplied by 5 is going to give me 10 for that one. For the last part, it says 100 to the power of A times 1,000 to the power of B 
can be written in the form 10 to the power of w. Show that w equals 2a plus 3b. Well, let's think about the 100. I actually think we can rewrite 100 as 10 squared. So that's 10 squared to the power of a. And 1,000 can be written as 10 cubed. So that's going to be 10 cubed to the power of b. And they've said that can be written as 10 to the power of w. Well, remember what we do. If we have brackets, we multiply these together. So that's going to be 10 to the power of 2a multiplied by 10 to the power of 3b equals 10 to the power of w. And here we are multiplying, so this power and this power will add. So it's 10 to the power of 2a plus 3b equals 10 to the power of w. And by just doing a sort of straight up comparison, we can see that w must be equal to 2a plus 3b. Hence, let's see if I can squeeze that in here. Hence, I'm going to actually just give myself a little bit of extra room. Hence, w equals 2a plus 3b. Just by comparing them, we can see that they're the same as each other. So we're going to look for 6, 5, and then we've already got this proof down here. 6, 5, and then the shown proof that we have. Okay, next one that we've got are more mixed problems. Write down the value of 36 to the half. That's just the square root of 36, which is 6. We've got 23 to the power of 0. Well, anything to the power of 0 is 1 apart from 0. 0 to the power of 0 is undefined. So we're going to do 27 to the power of minus 2 thirds. Well, there's three things we're going to do here. First of all, we're going to do the cube root of 27, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to square it, and then after that, we're going to take the reciprocal because of the power of minus 1. That's because minus 2 thirds, that does the cube root, that squares it, that does the reciprocal. If you don't want to write it in the way I've done, though, that's not a problem. So the cube root of 27 is 3, we're going to square that, and then we'll do the reciprocal. Well, 3 squared is 9, and 9 to the power of minus 1 is the reciprocal of 9, which is 1 ninth. So let's double check these. 6, 1, 1 ninth. Perfect. Okay, we are on some more mixed problems. So we've got 16 to the power of 3 quarters. This means we're going to do the fourth root because of the 4. And then after we've done that, we're going to cube it because of the 3. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. And 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. So the fourth root of 16 over 81 is 2 thirds. And then we're just going to cube that. So you cube each one separately. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So it's 8 over 27. Now, these mixed ones have got a bit of like kind of changing the base with this. So we're going to try and work out what the value of a plus b plus c is. So 1 over 9, I'm going to start with that one. 1 over 9, it wants it to be written as 3 to the power of a. Well, I know that that is 1 over 3 squared. And if it's 1 over, that's the same as 3 to the power of minus 2. Now, if this thing is equal to 3 to the power of a, that means that a is equal to minus 2. Now I'm going to have a look at 9 root 3. Okay, well 9 is 3 squared, and 3 square root of 3 is 3 to the power of a half. So you're going to add those powers together. That's 2 plus a half, which is 2.5. And we've said that this is the same as 3 to the power of b. So comparing these, like we did here, we said that a was minus 2. Well, that must mean that b is 2.5. So b is 2.5. Now, the last one that we've got is 1 over root 3. Well, 1 over root 3 is 1 over 3 to the power of a half. And because it's 1 over, that's 3 to the power of minus a half, which we're saying is 3 to the power of c. So c is minus a half, or c is minus 0 0.5. You could do it as fractions, or you could do it as decimals. All they want us to do is to find out the value of a plus b plus c. So that's going to be minus 2 plus 2.5, minus 0 0.5. When you add all that together, we get that the answer is 0. So our final answer is 0. So we've got 8 over 27, and then 0. OK, we have got some more mixed problems. It says 2.3 to the power of 6 is 148, correct to three significant figures. Find the value of 0 0.23 to the power of 6, correct to three significant figures. Well, the difference here is that this one is being divided by 10, 
and sorry, that 2.3 to become 0 0.23 is being divided by 10, or it's being multiplied by, uh, yeah, it's being divided by 10. But it's being divided by 10 to the power of 6 because of the fact that we've got a power of 6 here. It's going to be divided by 10 six times. So it's going to be 148 divided by 10 to the power of 6. That is going to be 0 0.00. Let me just double check. 1, 2, 3. Uh, one, four, eight. So let's double check that that has been divided by 10. It's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, it's been divided by 10 six times. So it's 0 0.000148, and that's correct to three significant figures. It wants us to find the value of 5 to the power of minus 2. Well, that is 1 over 5 squared, which is 1 over 25. And I'm pretty happy to just leave that as a fraction. So we have got the correct answer for the first one, 0 0.000148 and 1 over 25. Okay, we're now still on some of these mixed ones. It wants us to find the value of the fourth root of 81 times 10 to the power of 8. Well, actually, you can do the fourth root of 81, and then we can do the fourth root of 10 to the power of 8. The fourth root of 81 is 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. Now, the fourth root of 10 to the power of 8, you could think of this as 10 to the power of 8 to the power of a quarter, and you could multiply these two things together, the 8 times a quarter. The 8 times a quarter is 2. It kind of makes sense. If you do 10 to the power of 2 and you times it by itself four times, you'd have 10 to the power of 2 times 10 to the power of 2 times 10 to the power of 2 times 10 to the power of 2, and those twos would all add up to give you eight. So the value is three times by 100. 10 squared is 100. So the value is 300 for this one. The value of 64 to the power of minus a half. Well, first of all, let's just do 64 to the power of a half, which is going to be the square root of 64. And then the minus is going to take its reciprocal. The square root of 64 is eight. And when I do the reciprocal of eight, you get one over eight. The last one is kind of about changing the powers again. So it wants us to write this as a power of three. Sorry, not changing the powers, but changing the base. Well, the top is already a power of three. So I'm actually just going to leave the top as three to the power of n. But nine is three squared. So it's three squared to the power of n minus one. So the numerator is three to the power of n. But what you're going to do is you're going to multiply the two and the n minus one because of brackets. Now, n minus one times two is going to be two n minus two. So our last stage is to subtract the powers. We're going to do n subtract two n minus two. Now, if you subtracted it like this, you'd get it wrong. You need to make sure that you subtract it with brackets so that you get n minus two n and the minus minus two becomes a plus two. So that when we simplify this part that's in black here, n minus 2n is minus n, so it's minus n plus 2. And you could write that as 2 minus n, or you could write that as minus n plus 2. So it's 3 to the power of minus n plus 2. So let's see our answers. We've got 300, an eighth, and then 3 to the power of 2 minus n. But of course, that is the same as minus n plus 2. So we would definitely have got that last one correct, even though it looks slightly different to the mark scheme. Okay, more mixed questions. 7 to the power of 0, that's just 1. There's actually a power of 1 here. Remember, you add all these things together. So that's 1 plus 6 minus 6. That's just going to be 3 to the power of 1, which is 3. The 2 to the power of minus 4, a bit difficult to see, but that's a power of minus 4. That's 1 over 2 to the power of 4. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So the answer is 1 over 16. And then 27 to the power of a third is the cube root of 27, which is 3. So we've got 1, 3, 16, and 3. 1, 3, 16, and 3. Okay, we're now going to do some of them with matching the bases. And there's two of these questions, and these are a little bit trickier to do here. Now, in this case, the base that we're going to want to match them all to is 2. We've got a 2 here. This can be changed to a 2, and this can also be changed to a 2. So I'm going to try and work out these particular values that we've got. Now, First of all, 16, we're going to rewrite as 2 to the power of something. 2 to the power of something. Well, it's actually 2 to the power of 4, okay? So I'm going to rewrite that as 2 to the power of 4. And 8 is 2 to the power of 3. So if I rewrite this as 2 to the power of 4, that's my 16. That's to the power of a fifth. That's being multiplied by 2 to the power of x. And that's going to be equal to 2 cubed to the power of 3 over 4. 
Now all we need to remember is that with these powers they're going to multiply because it's brackets. So that's 2 to the power of 4 fifths multiplied by 2 to the power of x equals the 3 times 3 quarters, 3 times 3 quarters is 9 quarters. Here they are multiplying, so we're actually going to add those powers together. So it's 2 to the power of 4 fifths plus x equals 2 to the power of 9 quarters. Now because we've matched the bases, I can say that this thing must be equal to this thing. So just going up here so I have a little bit more space, 4 fifths plus x is equal to 9 quarters. So all I need to do now is 9 quarters take away 4 fifths, and that will tell me what x is. So I'm going to do 9 quarters minus 4 fifths, and we get the answer 29 over 20. So x is equal to 29 over 20. And of course, you could give that as a decimal if we wanted to. If it was as a decimal, it would be 1.45. So let's see if we've got that right. Yep, 1.45, or we could also have said that that is the 9, 29 over 20. So the last one that I've got in this section is a similar kind of thing, apart from this time, the base that we're going to want it to is we want them all to have a base of 3. The reason I'm going to pick a base of 3 is because 9, 27, and 3 can all be written in that way. Now 9 is 3 squared, and 27 is 3 cubed. So I'm actually going to rewrite this as 3 squared to the power of minus a half, and that is equal to 3 cubed to the power of a quarter, divided by 3 to the power of x plus 1. So I'm going to do here, multiplying these powers, 2 times minus a half is minus 1. So 3 to the power of minus 1 equals 3 to the power of 3 quarters, divided by 3 to the power of x plus 1. Now here, these powers, the 3 quarters and the x plus 1, are going to be subtracted. So I'm going to do 3 quarters subtract x plus 1 which is actually 3 quarters subtract x and also subtract 1 because you're subtracting this positive 1. 3 quarters take away 1 is minus a quarter. So it's minus 1 quarter minus x. It's worth noting this is question 19. This is a pretty tricky question. So the left hand side is 3 to the power of minus 1 and the right hand side is 3 to the power of minus 1 quarter minus x. Now this part that I'm going to highlight in green must be equal to each other because we've matched the bases. So minus 1 must be equal to minus a quarter minus x. Now there's loads of different ways of doing this. I'm going to plus 1 quarter to both sides. When I plus a quarter to minus 1, I get minus 3 quarters. That leaves me with minus x, which means if I make both of them positive, x must be equal to 3 quarters. And of course they would accept 0 0.75 as well. So we do get 3 quarters or equivalent. That is all of the questions that have been asked on indices. The next thing I'm going to be doing is going through some questions with thirds. Do make sure you're subscribed because there's going to be tons of these videos coming out and also lots of other tutorials if you're wanting to understand these topics more deeply rather than just the last part of going through the exam questions.